Hey guys, welcome back. This is Val from Dreamlight. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to extend your scenes inside Dash to be using a single prop. And for this demo, I'm going to be using Stone Mason's new Temple of the Sun, which is a very cool prop. But also, if you look at it really here in the package, you see that it's kind of a little smaller, right? It's not a huge uh, scenery like Stone Mason usually has. And from the promos, you might think, man, this looks really good big right but it's not that super big it's kind of like a tiny small thing like a central piece if you want right but it's kind of 360 degrees so you can go around and look at it from different angles all right so let's head into the studio so when loading this set you immediately get the central piece all right right now i have texture shaded preview so we just showcases that using OpenGL. You can see it's not a super large set, but it's nice. It's like a small island and it's 360, all right? So looking here in the scene tab, you can see that this prop is made of several, well, smaller props and instances. You've got different fences, different steps, different rocks and all that, right? And all the um, ferns and plants and there's a lot of smaller props and Dash Studio has really evolved over the last few years so this new node instance function is really neat and it will literally copy everything inside you know a node that's selected uh, including things that are copied before right these here these, uh, you can see it's kind of like semi-transparent on this box. These lantern instances are created using this node instance, right? So it's very advanced nowadays. You can clone this main top thing, including everything inside, and it works like a charm. So you can either copy once, just create one node instance. Then you have that here. And now, as you can see, let me just zoom out a little bit. You can grab that copy and use translation tool and you've got everything neatly copied. Now there's a cool thing using this technique. It kind of saves memory, especially because it's a clone. It saves texture memory, but also it saves and makes rendering easier because it's an instance. It's, it's a clone made of these items. It's not the same as loading all these items from, from scratch, right? Now, what you can do with these is you can, of course, rotate them, right? So you can get away a little bit from the repetition, you would see, and try to choose different angles so that it you know, makes repetition not that obvious. And also, especially on distant items, let me show that in a moment, on distant items, you can scale it up and down and make more like a tower-ish uh, uh, props, right? So cool, let me just undo that. And I'm gonna also show you how to clone multiple times. So there's new node instances with an S at the end that you can select, hey, I want five copies, click on accept, and it ends up in the folder. You can expand the folder, and you've got all these instances inside. Now, a cool thing to do is to switch over to top view, right? This is a neat view that would just make it easy to position our instances. So here we can just drag and drop, if you will. And first I'm just gonna quickly move them like that, just to get them to go around my set. And this one here, it's not, not really wanting to be moved. It's outside the screen, there we go, all right. And like I said, you can add a rotation to just break away the obvious repetition, right? Let me just click on these. And uh, well, that one is pretty okay. All right, and this one, I should say, maybe we can do something like that. Like that, right? Cool. What you also can do is um, is to scale the items on either this 
like X or even Z. So that can also be used to project things a little bit differently. And if you are here on the center piece, let's say you're somewhere here, you don't really see if this item is exactly 100% or if it's 120 or 150. Maybe don't exaggerate, right? That's gonna stretch it a little bit too much. But you can, to some extent, give a little bit of variation, especially, especially specifically on the height. And if they're even further away with the fog effect, which we're gonna add in a moment, then you can even scale them further. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. All right, so we have that roughly in place. We can, of course, add more variation to these here. Cool. All right, let's call it done. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new camera just from scratch. And we're just gonna set these values here. So I'm gonna to set to dome and scene, remove that image from here, pick a more summer-ish date, let's say 06, something like that, and a little more midday, early afternoon, and so forth. All right, I'm gonna switch mode to my camera, and then we we'll just pick a view here. So I'm just gonna pick a nice view and have a little bit of a scene extension visible here. All right. So see, you can create some depth and you can get a pretty much cool 360 degree looking scene, right? All right. So now if you have chosen a camera view it's very easy to just continue and you know add clones because what you can do is pick the centerpiece again clone it then fix the mismatch and if you got a clone over here you can control c that to copy it use command in a mac and then go to the new clone and control v to paste and then you've got a new clone you can just immediately move here and place so that also helps you to do that on the get-go. Now, like I said, distant items that are further away, you can by all means go ahead and play with them and add some height because they are very, very, very far away from the camera. So you can't really tell how they are, you know, structured. If there's anything missing or if it feels kind of stretch or not, it's very difficult to say. So you kind of get away with that, right? All right. So let me now turn on the video preview so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna add a very quick water surface, just plain, that's 100 meters large, right in the center. And I'm gonna drag that down a little bit so it kind of gets underneath the, uh, sorry about that, underneath the bottom of the rocks. So maybe around here, somewhere, all right. And then I want to change that to a water shader real quick. So I have that set in the scene tab. I'm going to go to uh, surfaces, plane, uh, sorry, presets. And then I'm going to choose shaders, eye ray, and choose liquids. All right, there we go. And choose water. There is no more ways of doing water, obviously. I'm going to also draw a ground. And I want to now scale that ground or the water so it's really covering my scene. So I'm going to make it 1,000 times larger. So it covers some ground. Now, when you are hitting the horizon like I'm doing right now, it kind of gets a little bit tricky because you kind of collide with the edge. And what you can do is in the environment tab here uh, of the render settings, the sub tab over in the settings, you can go to horizon blur and let me just select that here right quick here and choose two. That would blend a little bit better uh, with the waterline. Now, in addition to that, what you want to do is throw in something called matte fog. It's already here added by Stormmason for this particular set. Uh, I'm gonna adjust lighting in a moment, but first of all, what you can do is set it to a little bit more brighter. So it kind of brightens the scene a little bit quickly and more early on. This one we're gonna adjust to orangish so it becomes a bit more blue tinted. All right. 
And now here we can set this value to be a little bit smaller in size so it starts to engage more early on. And this one we can pull it more to the right to get a little bit more softer blue look. So there we go. This is how you can quickly extend your scenes inside Dash Studio by cloning um, the main set. As you can see, it's, it's very quick, very uh, cool. And there is some vignetting added here. I'm going to turn that off and just set this to a normal value, 13. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is set a little bit more how I want to define my lights. Uh, it's a little bit too intense, so I'm going to drag down the intensity. And what you want to do is obviously create some drama. I always talk about drama in the renders. So that has to do with the angle and where shadows fall and all that, right? And if you cannot reach enough shadows to fill like large areas, you can lower the height of the sun to get longer shadows. That naturally helps to, as you can see, place shadows on areas that otherwise would steal attention. So we can get really cool looking images very quickly by extending your scenes that way. So guys, that's pretty much all for today's video. You can check out this new set by Stonemason. There is a link below this video. Also, if you want to master Dash Studio and Photoshop 3D Art, there is a link below this video as well, which takes you to the new $1 trial we have going on right now, which gives you access to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tutorials. Now, there's also a free link below this video to our Photo Studio for Dash Studio, which gives you free studio props, lights, a filter, and a 27 minute video tutorial completely for free. So guys, thanks so much for watching again. I hope you got a little bit of cool info from this video. So go ahead, play with your renders, have fun, and I'll see you soon again.